Hello crafty friends, welcome to the third video in my More Bang For Your Buck series in which I take a basic shape die, this tag die, and create a bunch of different cards with it. If you want to check out the previous videos, there is a playlist linked in the eye and in the video description. Just click more and it should reveal itself to you. So today's card is inspired by this tag. This came off of something we bought to put out in the back garden and I thought it was beautiful and would make a lovely card design. It's got this lovely warm grey background, a white line drawing in the background of leafy things, this translucent white area with gold and writing on it. And I thought, as I say, it would make a lovely design for the card. It's been raining on and off so far today, and it's been very loud in the conservatory, so I'm gonna to switch to voiceover. Right, enough waffling, let's get crafting. So the first thing I did was take a piece of mixed media paper and blend on some pebble ink from Catherine Pooler. This is a lovely warm grey. I did get a bit impatient though with the blending, so I smushed the ink pad down around the edges of the piece of paper and then quickly blended it out with my brush before it had too much of a chance to soak in. And I find this is a really easy way of getting the Catherine Pooler inks to blend out quickly. Just smush it down, blend it out quickly with your brush and that seems to work well. So once I was satisfied with the greyness of this piece of card, I dried it with my hairdryer because I wanted to do some heat embossing on it and I didn't want any of the ink to be sticky. But before I did the heat embossing, I took my tag die and cut three tags out of it. I then placed these in my all to new stamp wheel and I used this stamp positioner because it's got a grip mat in it so I could line up my tags perfectly next to each other and stamp my image onto them. The stamp I used is, I think it was a freebie that came with a stamp magazine. I think I probably picked this up at a charity shop. And I chose this one because it was very delicate, very pretty, but it was also big enough to stretch across the three tags. And I cut the tags and then did the embossing on it rather than emboss and then cut the tags because I wanted the image to be continuous across the tags and it was easier to cut the tags and then emboss than it would have been to emboss and then try and line up the tags so the image was continuous. I hope you can see what I mean. To do the actual heat embossing, I did my usual process of dusting my tags with corn flour to remove any stickiness. I stamped twice with embossing ink to get good coverage. I then used fine detail white embossing powder and then I heated it with my heat tool. The card I made today was made from linen texture cardstock and it is four and a half inches by eight and a quarter inches. But before I stuck my tags on the front of the card, I wanted a little bit of something behind them. So I cut a panel that was five centimeters wide by eight and a quarter inches long. I added two score lines near the edges to add a bit of texture and interest. I beveled the edges with an embossing tool to give that die cut look. And then I used my tape runner to stick that down to the front of my card blank. This is gonna be a 10 fold landscape card with the tags shuffled up to the left hand side to give them breathing space to the right. So once I had that little panel stuck down I decided to add some bling. I wanted to bring in the gold that was on the original inspiration tag. So I took my strip dies and cut some strips from Miri Gold cardstock. The strips weren't quite long enough to stretch the whole length of my card, so I just used another strip to extend the first strip that I stuck down, knowing that the join, the seam, was going to be hidden behind one of the tags that I was adding, so you'd never know that it wasn't one piece of gold card running the whole length of the card.
to bring in some dimension to the card I added foam tape behind my tags and then I added them as I say to the left hand side of the card. I wanted a little gap between each tag so I popped the first one down and then lined up the second and then added the third and eyeballed the gap and I think it worked out fine. As soon as I saw the inspiration tag, I knew it would make a great card design, but it also spoke to me of a sympathy card. It was quite a somber feeling tag. So I took a with sympathy stamp from my stash and heat embossed it in gold on vellum. And then I wanted to cut it out with a stitched rectangle die, but it didn't have exactly the right size. So I chose a stitched square die and put that on but had the bottom bit hanging out of the cutting folder so that when I ran it through my mini Gemini it didn't cut that second vertical line. So once I'd done the first cut I shuffled the square die along interlocking it using the stitchy impressions and then I popped it back in the cutting folder from the other direction, again having that second vertical cutting edge hanging out of my cutting folder, run it through my die cutting machine and that elongated the die and cut out the rectangle to exactly the right size. On my inspiration tag, the translucent rectangle has a gold border around it. And I thought the easiest way of doing this would be to use a gold jelly roll pen and draw over the stitched impressions in my rectangle. And that makes it look as if it's got a bit of gold stitching around it. Before I added this to the card though, I wanted it to be a bit more opaque or less translucent. So I ran the rectangle of vellum through my Xyron sticker maker to make it sticky on the back. I then stuck this on another piece of vellum and cut that out with scissors. It's still translucent, so you can see what's going on behind it, but it's a little bit thicker, so it helps it stand out. It also meant that I could use mini glue dots to adhere my vellum rectangle and they wouldn't be seen. I was careful to stick these behind the writing to disguise them even more. But when I stick the whole thing down to my tag, you can't see the glue dots at all. So it's almost as if it's floating above the tag there. I decided not to add the sentiment in the middle I thought it would just look better shuffled over to the left again and it would also let that beautiful flower in the middle of the middle tag really shine. As a finishing touch I bought in some white Nouveau drops and added them around the sentiment area and that was it. So here's the finished card and I'm really happy with it. I think you can see that I took inspiration from this tag but it is definitely a different Thing. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of how you could take inspiration from everyday things but also how you can use your basic shape dies to create cards. Right, thanks for watching and I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now.